Look, as somebody who's been fighting congestion pricing for five years and is party to a lawsuit to stop it because the MTA violated federal law by not completing a, a, a economic, an environmental impact statement as required by NEPA, I'm, I'm glad about this announcement, but I do think that we need to remain vigilant. Uh, I think that this is politically motivated. And I think New Yorkers need to take note that this we have an election this year, and if the Democrats win November 5th, the congestion pricing will come back November 6th. So in many ways, uh, this election, this November, is a referendum on congestion pricing here in the city of New York. And characterize for me the conversations you've had on Staten Island or elsewhere, because if you're if you're in Manhattan, you've got a mix of people. Uh, some people say they, they like more funding for the MTA. People say there's too much traffic. Uh, the, people say they don't have a car. Uh, in, in some of these areas where there are a lot of drivers, it, it was such a focus, this issue. And that message, I think, was at some point getting through to the governor. Yeah, in my, in my district of Staten Island and Southern Brooklyn, it's nearly 80% that oppose congestion pricing. And you're seeing a lot of people in the outer boroughs opposed to it because, again, they should not have to pay this toll to drive into another borough in the city in which they live. And in particularly in my community where we have the Verrazano Bridge toll, uh, they are sensitive to a, another toll. And the, and the governor wasn't even going to give the people of Staten Island a credit for the toll that they already pay to connect to Brooklyn. So they'd have to, it would basically amount to a double toll for them, which would be thousands and thousands of dollars for people who commute. Now people, Talk about the subway system. They want people to ride mass transit. Well, the governor has to do more to make New York City's subway system safe so people feel comfortable. I represent nurses. Uh, I represent restaurant workers. I represent police officers and first responders who have to take uh, who would have to take mass transit at very odd times in the middle of the night uh, for their shifts. And they don't feel safe. And this is why, because of the bail law that the state passed. So they should be looking at repealing that as well. You mentioned political motivation on the part of Governor Hochul. She was in Washington, and then then all of a sudden there's this announcement that she's changed her mind on congestion pricing. Uh, if that's what happened, if she had a conversation with President Biden, if she had a conversation with Hakeem Jeffries, uh, it would suggest that there's a political motivation. But from your perspective, uh, is a win a win? Look, I think there's two issues. One is she's responding to our lawsuit because uh, it's very well that the judge may have put a halt to this and it would have embarrassed her even more if she didn't get ahead of it. Uh, we have merit our lawsuit because the Biden administration rubber stamped this congestion pricing plan as soon as they came in in violation of federal NEPA law, as I said. That is what our lawsuit um, claims and that is, I think, a very merit uh, merit lawsuit. So what the other issue, though, is you notice that President Trump two weeks ago, after a conversation I had with him, put out on his Truth Social page that he will reverse congestion pricing on day one. His administration had sat on it and did not allow it to move forward. And I think that probably did wake up the Biden administration to perhaps say, wait a minute. Uh, and I think that the Democrats are afraid of, of losing more seats in New York in the House and in the state legislature uh, because so many New Yorkers are opposed to this. But this is why I say that this is a victory today. We should be happy for the taxpayers and the working class. They won one, but we need to also be vigilant. And uh, November 5th, again, the Democrats win. This thing will be back November 6th. Uh, it, it, you know, it's not clear that President Trump would have had the authority uh, if he wins re-election to, to reverse it, but it certainly put it on the radar as far as uh, an issue that could come back at, at Democrats because it was a, a Democratic legislature that put this through in Albany, a Democratic governor uh, leading the MTA to put it through. Some That uh, political calculus is something that we will be talking a lot about. A final word on this from the, the people who, who are celebrating at this moment, is there some, some skepticism about whether this is a delay until November 5th only versus a, a longer and more substantial delay? Yeah, absolutely. I think people are skeptical. They know that, look, they see that the governor, the president made one minor change at the border after doing 60 policy changes that dismantled the border. They see that that was in response uh, to the people polling that border is their number one issue right now. They don't see, they see what's happening in New York City. Two police officers shot by an illegal immigrant who this administration let in with his 60 policy changes. 
They also see that the president is raiding our strategic petroleum reserves to lower in a desperate attempt to lower gas prices in response to his anti energy policies that drove utility costs and food costs and uh, gas prices up. So they see that there's a desperate attempt here to kind of for window dressing, make some changes right before the election. But don't be mistaken, these policies will come back if you keep voting for the same people who have all along supported them. And that's my message for New Yorkers that they should continue to call their city, state and federal representatives if they are against congestion pricing and let them know because for once they are listening. It's election year, but we have to make sure we kill this thing for good. Representative Nicole Malliotakis with us this morning. Thank you.